the city. One speaker at a time. I'm transmitting it live. Yeah, taking it from the city. One speaker at a time. And I'm transmitting it live. Powerful poetry, the voice of the block. Lyrical code for the soldier hustle, off for the squad. Five elements, the culture, call it real hip hop. Fresh out the boombox, never go hot. I'm in the ballad of the big boy for the struggling grind. I'm on the streets like I'm homeless, living the rhyme. <laughs> yeah, it's one speaker at a time. I'm transmitting to the city of my mind. In due time to shine, it's the way I'm designed. The end of your mind with the light of the truth. Talk of the time, I'm defined by my mic, not the industry. I'm not the industry, but the energy, the third line. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Kevin Bracey's Chasing Greatness podcast. Today's podcast, today's conversation is going to be around this thing we call failure. I was in the gym yesterday and I saw this gentleman who actually came out to the Monstar show. It's his first Monstars of Motivation show. And I, I was, I was, I was curious to see what he thought. And and I remember seeing him at the show. I see him at the gym previous to the show. And then I hadn't seen him since for like three weeks and um, at the gym. So I finally saw him yesterday and I said, man, how did you like the show? He said, Kevin, it was such a great show. He said, it reminded me of, of, of Las, a Las Vegas show or something like that. I was like, oh man, thank you. I appreciate that. And I was like, any feedback you can give me? And he was thinking, and as he was thinking, you know, I was sitting back and I was waiting. I was excitedly waiting to hear his feedback because I'm about greatness is one of the definitions is bettering your best. I thought the two shows were great, but you can always better your best. And especially when you get productive feedback, that'll help you better it, right? Especially from people you respect. Well, this gentleman said, Kevin, everything was great. He said, but there's a piece that I think was missing. I said, what's that piece? He said, a piece on failure. How do you frame failure? Some people frame it. He said, I worked in a lot of juvenile halls and with a lot of juveniles. And he said, a lot of times they think one moment of failure is is their label for the rest of their lives. And right when he said that, it took me back to something that happened to me recently. As you know, I'm a motivational entertainer. Some people call me a motivational speaker. Well, as a speaker, one of the things that we fear most is being on stage and having your mind go blank, having you stand up and your mind sit down, as Les Brown would say. Well, for me, when I speak in front of professionals, I'm not necessarily talking about elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, colleges. I'm talking professionals. When I'm in front of professionals, I try to memorize every company for those who are listening and who don't know this. They have a mission statement, the mission of their company. Well, I try to memorize every company's mission statement. And when I start my talk, I want to show them that I've really studied them by giving their mission statement. Well, with this particular company, a couple of weeks ago, they introduced me and I stepped on stage and I made the connection with the audience and I went into their mission statement. It's at the very beginning of my talk. And as I went into their mission statement, my mind went blank. And let me mind you, my mind went blank at the same part of the mission statement that when I was rehearsing it, I was afraid that at this specific spot, I have to be able to remember this transition word. And it was going through my head as I was studying it before this moment. Well, when I got on the stage, self-fulfilling prophecy happened, meaning what I thought would happen, the worst thing that I thought would happen actually happened. I forgot their mission statement at that one transition word that I was fearing during rehearsal. And in that moment, I felt like a failure. How do I know? What did it feel like? Well, see, first of all, you have to know that you're the only one that can define whether you've failed or succeeded. You're the only one that can do that. No one else can tell you that. Everything else is anybody is someone else's opinion. Keep that in mind. Well, I knew I had failed because of the way I felt. Internally, I shrunk. Not externally. They didn't know that I felt like a failure. Internally, I shrunk. My stomach was in knots. I was sweating profusely and I'm already a sweater. I carry a towel. Those of you who've seen me and know me, I always have a towel because I'm the type that will sweat in a walk-in freezer. Okay. 
I was sweating profusely. My mouth got dry and I felt very, very embarrassed. Thank God my skin is brown or else I... If my skin wasn't brown, my son calls me brown. <laughs> my Thank God my skin is brown or they would have seen me turn red because I failed in that moment. Speaking, my friends, is the number one feared profession on the planet because of this reason. People would rather die, would rather be burned up in a fire, would rather be in a casket at a funeral than the preacher or pastor delivering the eulogy at a funeral. That's the fear that's associated with public speaking because of this moment that I was in after 16 years as a professional speaker. I've only had two of these where my mind just totally went blank. Normally, if it goes blank, the word will come and you keep going. Well, my mind went blank and the word never came to get me back on track. But I had to keep going. I had 40 minutes to go, 40 minutes to feel. Well, well, look, 40 minutes to F-I-L-L, feel with content, and F-E-L-L, feel that failure that I was feeling in the moment. Well, I got through that 40 minutes, and I think I did a very good job of finishing that 40 minutes with a ton of confidence. But internally, the entire 40 minutes, how I felt in that moment of failure stuck with me. I could feel it on the inside of me. Once I was done, they applauded. They gave me so much love. And after I was done, I was walking out of the facility and everyone was coming in up. Oh my God, that was so great. That was so great. But the only thing that I could remember was the moment of failure. So I walked to my car, got in my car. I sat down and I picked up my phone and I wrote a Facebook post about it. I am Kevin Bracy on Facebook if you want to read it. I am Kevin B-R-A-C-Y. I wrote a Facebook post about it, uh, post about it. <clears throat> and then I took off after about 30 minutes of sitting in that parking lot, went over to Subway to grab a sandwich because I was starved. And I went over to a park and just sat in a park. And as I was sitting in the park, listening to some music and eating my lunch, I started to cry like a baby. Yes, I'm a grown man. I'm not afraid to tell you that I cried like a baby because failure came over to me. And I don't like how that felt. It felt horrible, but it wasn't the end of the world because the next day I had an opportunity to speak in front of another audience. And the next day I had an opportunity to speak in front of another audience. And then the next day, and all those three, I did not fail. I did not forget anything. I didn't forget how it felt. I, it was on my mind, but I was flawless in those next speeches. In reality, that failure only lasted a moment. It was humiliating, especially in front of 500 sets of eyes, 500 professionals. After 16 years of doing something, you would think that that, if anything's going to happen, it won't be that. Well, it did happen. And guess what? I don't feel like a failure right now as I talk to you. I feel like I feel like I felt uh, failed in that moment, but I don't feel like I failed. I don't feel like a failure now. See, some people fail whether you studied for a test and didn't pass the test or, or, or interviewed for a job and didn't get the job or tried out for the team, whether it be baseball, football, basketball, cheerleading team, softball team, and didn't make the team. That does not make you a failure in life. That means you failed to make the opportunity or the goal that you had for yourself, but that's okay. You just have to keep moving on. Some people fail and carry that label for the rest of their lives. So I'm so glad my friend at the gym reminded me to send you a podcast about failure. There is greatness in you. Just because you fail does not make you a failure. I agree with Henry Ford. Failure gives you an opportunity to begin again more intelligently. I like to say with more intelligence. So if you failed at something, don't give up. Don't wear that label on your chest or on your back. You failed in that moment. What did you learn from it? And how do you keep moving? And since that moment that I failed, every speech since I remember that. And it gives me, it makes me more determined to be a better communicator, to study harder. And I was already a hard worker, but it's made me more determined to connect with my audiences at a whole new level. Failure is temporary, my friends. It is not permanent. Until next time, 
This has been Kendra Kobe and Caleb's daddy and Jessica's husband, also known to my family and friends as the Muhammad Ali of motivation, telling you that there is greatness within you. Best effort every day. Win the day. Brace yourself. Talk to you soon. Brace. See ya. Powerful poetry, the voice of the block. Lyrical code for the soldier hustle, off for the quad. Five elements, the culture call it real hip hop. Fresh out the boom box, never been hot. I'm really the ballad of a big boy for the struggling grind. I'm on the streets like I'm homeless, living the rhyme. <laughs> yeah, it's one speaker at a time. Right. I'm transmitting to the city of my mind. In due time to shine, it's the way I'm designed. The end of your mind with the light of the truth. Talk of the time. I'm defined by my mic, not the industry. Not the industry, but the energy. The third eye sight. Brace yourself, we got to be.